The topical study is an excellent format when your research requires the use of several word studies, but the topical study is limited when the word study format will not meet the need. For example, should your topic be a person or a place in the Bible, the word study format will not help you discover the scriptural importance of the person or place being studied. The word study format was designed to help the student of the word conduct Hebrew or Greek word studies. To conduct a person or place study in the original languages is redundant and unnecessary because the names of persons and places in the Bible are in their original form already. The Bible is filled with the successes and the failures of men and women of God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, their lives are recorded in the Bible as examples for us. Their testimonies of faith and their admonishments of unbelief are eternally etched on the holy pages of Scripture. When you meditate the lives of your holy ancestors, or you sift through dust and stone to discover the importance of Bible locations, you are touching the real humanity of God's holy word. When you study the people and the places of the Bible, you are gazing into the lost reflections of your own humanity. Their failures are your failures, and the keys that release the blessings of God in their lives can also work for you. Each person or place study you conduct should have the same three basic parts as the word and topical study formats. They should have an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. Be very careful that you are researching the correct person or place in the Bible. Ken Mulman, author of Bible Research, made the following observation. The Bible makes reference to 30 different Zechariahs, 15 Jonathans, 8 Judases, seven Marys, and five Jameses. Also be careful that you identify the various names that may apply to one individual or location. For example, the Apostle Peter was also known as Simon, Simeon, or even Cephas. Also, Mount Zion in the Bible is also known as the City of David and the Holy Hill. The success of a Bible research project is seriously influenced by the quality of introduction you do. Should you rush through the preparation of your introduction, the entire project will reflect your lack of diligence and patience. The person place study introduction should have five steps. Let's examine each step. Our sample project will be a study on the importance of Zion in the Bible. The first step of your study introduction is to develop a topical thesis statement. In order to construct your thesis statement, you should think of one or two sentences that accurately describes and defines the goals, objectives, and parameters of your study. You might prepare a topical thesis statement similar to this example. In the Bible, the term Zion or Sion is used over 160 times. Since the Bible places considerable emphasis on this term, identify the importance of Zion and what influence it has on us today. The purpose of a topical thesis statement is to prevent a disorganized research project. You will find that any good research project should be guided by a question or seeking thesis statement. A seeking thesis statement is one or two sentences where you establish a seeking direction to your project. Please take notice of the fact that the sample thesis statement has two objectives defined. The first objective is to discover why Zion is important in the Word of God 
And the second objective is to discover what influence Zion has on us today. It's good to include in any research project, especially a person or place study, what influence your study topic has on your life. By doing this action, you personalize your study project. In order to complete the next four steps of your introduction, you will need research tools that will bridge the four research gaps of your study topic. When I compiled my sample study, I used Unger's Bible Dictionary, the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, the Jacenus Hebrew Lexicon, the Oxford Bible Atlas, and PC Study Bible computer software. When you study scripture, you will often find that the definition of the name of a person or place has a striking similarity with their place in Bible history. It was common for children of destiny to receive names that indicated the influence in a positive or negative fashion he or she had on the plan and purpose of God. Once you've written your topical thesis statement, you should seek to identify the proper definition for the name of the person or place being studied. Your second step is to open the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to your study word and identify the Strong's reference number or numbers for your Bible project. With this information, now turn to the appropriate Hebrew or Greek dictionary in your Strong's Concordance. Record the Strong's reference number, the transliteration, and a brief definition of the name used by the person or place being studied on your worksheet. Should the Strong's not provide you with the necessary information, consult other linguistic aids. At this time, also record any other name your person or place might be identified with. In the sample study, Zion was also known as the City of David or the Holy Hill. Once this step is done, you might record a name definition similar to this example. The name signifies fortress to protect, citadel. Zion is also known as the City of David and the Holy Hill. The third step in your person or place study is to compile a basic historical survey on your study topic. In order to do this procedure, open your Bible dictionary or encyclopedia to your study topic and extract pertinent information. When you read the articles about your study topic, seek to establish the reason why your study topic had scriptural significance. You might record an historical observation similar to this example. Zion is significant because David captured it and made Zion his city, the city of David, 2 Samuel 5.7. In Zion, David constructed his palace, 2 Samuel 5.11. David acquired the threshing floor of Uranu further up the ridge, and there he erected an altar. Solomon built his palatial temple on the site of Uranu's threshing floor, 2 Samuel 24.18 and following. Seek to identify the factors that cause your study person or place to rise above the ordinary. For example, Bethel, a town about 12 miles north of Jerusalem, would have no scriptural significance without the dream of Jacob. Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 through 22. When you seek to establish historical data, you should always consider the influence of great events and ancestral background. Every person or place in the Bible was motivated and influenced by their cultural surrounding. The three strongest cultural influences that impacted the writing of Scripture is religion, family, and government. The fourth step in your person or place study is to identify the cultural influences that impacted your study topic. Once again, you return to your Bible dictionary or encyclopedia to extract pertinent cultural information concerning your topic. 
You may also use cultural research tools similar to manners and customs of the Bible. Bible software and the internet can also be used to research the cultural influences of the Bible. But should you use the internet, a strong warning must be given. The internet can be a tremendous reference source, but you must be very careful with the information you extract. Every type of extreme doctrine is posted on the internet. Therefore, you need to filter what you read and use the two or three witness rule to confirm your information. When you read the articles about your study topic, seek to establish the reason why your study topic had scriptural significance. You might record cultural influences similar to this example. The religious influence of Zion is established in the erection of the Tabernacle of David and the eventual construction of Solomon's Temple. Zion was designed to be a holy place of worship. Zion was known as the Temple Hill. David's palace was also located on Mount Zion. In my sample study, you will notice that the influence of religion gave Zion its scriptural importance. Without the Tabernacle of David and the presence of the Ark of the Lord, the influence of Zion would have been limited to the location of David's royal palace. The final step to your introduction is to determine what kind of influence geography might have on your study topic. You should locate where your person lived or where your place is located on a Bible map. Once you have located your study topic on a map, you should seek to determine which governmental centers ruled over your person or place. Also identify which pagan nations could have influenced your study topic. You might record geographical observations similar to this example. Zion was a rock escarpment on the ridge between the Kidron and the Tyropean valleys of Jerusalem. Eventually the name signified the city of Jerusalem. Also consult rainfall and vegetation charts because in Bible times, rainfall and vegetation determined wealth. When you consider the influence of rainfall and vegetation, you are considering the economics of the region your person or place inhabited. The reason you gather historical, cultural, geographical, and linguistic data is to create the point of reference your study person or place dwelt in. By placing yourself in the shoes of your study person, you can travel the dusty roads of ancient lands and civilizations. The point of reference you create for yourself will either open to you the secrets of your study or will lock you out because you failed to create the proper environment to conduct your study. The format for compiling the main body of your person place study is nearly the same as the word study. The only difference being you're not referencing the usage of a Greek or Hebrew word. Instead, you're studying the influence of a person or place. When you compile the data of a person place study, you will need to use the main concordance of your Strong's exhaustive concordance. Locate your study person or place, and before you is every place in the Bible where the name of your person or place is used. Make note of every scripture that helps answer or clarify your person place study topical thesis statement. Once you have identified the references you will use in your study, take the time to meditate each reference, considering the influence it has on your introduction. Remember, as you scan your list, you will be looking for cause and effect. But since your topic is a person or place, look also for the action and reaction and the sowing and reaping principles. Record your scriptural references under the heading entitled Reference. Adjacent to your reference, 
Record a brief excerpt from your scripture, indicating how your study word is used in the verse. This information should be recorded under the heading of quotation. The final thing you do with your study passage is to meditate it with the various meditation techniques presented in Episode 4. When you have completed your meditation, briefly record the insights and conclusions you acquired. These conclusions should be recorded under the heading of Meditation's Insights. Proceed through your list of references and correlate your meditations with your introduction. Now it should be obvious why you must take the time to build a proper introduction. Without a properly prepared introduction, the success of your main body will be limited. In simple terms, should you build a thorough introduction, you will be able to build a thorough main body. Should additional worksheets be needed, use the Word Study Supplemental Worksheet. When you research and meditate a person or place in Scripture, there are nine guidelines you should consider. Each of these guidelines should help you establish and build an understanding of your topic. The guidelines are Character Identify the positive and negative character traits of the person being studied. Ponder these traits and seek to identify their influence in you. Plan of God Determine the influence your study topic had on the plan and purpose of God in a positive or negative fashion. Meditate your findings and seek to determine your influence on the plan and purpose of God. Peer Pressure Establish similarities and differences with others who lived in the same historical period. Recognize that peer pressure played a crucial role in the Bible. Attitudes Identify joys and sorrows, successes and failures. Also determine the attitudes that caused your study topic to obey or disobey the will of God. Spiritual Principles Identify the spiritual principles that blessed the life or caused it to fail. Spiritual Relationship Determine the relationship your topic experienced with God. Personal Application Can any lessons be learned from the person or place being studied? Symbolic Usage Discover any symbolic or figurative usage of the person or place being studied. In order to establish a symbol, look for any significant event or attitude that caused your study topic to be spiritually important. Once you have identified the proper event or attitude, determine if it has a spiritual counterpart. Also research your name to determine if any other Bible writer used it as a symbol. Prophetic Usage while you're searching the scriptures, determine whether your study topic has a prophetic importance and whether that prophecy has been fulfilled. These nine guidelines will help you understand the person or place being studied. When you identify any of these guidelines in your study, record that information on your worksheet. When you have completed the main body section of your study, you are ready to bring your study to a conclusion. Often the novice Bible student is apprehensive of this section because they are confronted with not knowing what to say or how to summarize their research. You should have no problem writing a thorough conclusion if you prepared a thorough main body. In simple terms, your conclusion should be a simple reiteration of your meditations in the main body. Correlate your Bible research with your introductory thesis statement. During this correlation, take time to look for similarities and differences and for cause and effect. When your conclusion is finished, you should have answered your introductory thesis statement. In fact, 
you should begin compiling and directing your study project toward its conclusion with the first pen strokes of your introduction. Your conclusion is the goal line of your project. You cannot score until you cross the line. In other words, you cannot win a race until you cross the finish line. Any experienced runner realizes that he or she must picture the finish line in his or her mind at the sound of the starting gun in order to win the race. When a runner pictures the finish line, the runner knows the proper pace, energy and effort that will be needed to finish the race. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Faith chapter. From Abel to Noah, from righteous Abraham to Joseph to Moses, these men of God chose to suffer with the people of God, knowing that the praise of God was much greater than the accolades of men. We see in the apostles of Christ the same faith and vision, men who chose to suffer and die for the revelation and glory found in Jesus Christ. Not only did these men endure the pain and suffering caused by their faith, but the pages of church history is stained red with the blood of the faithful also. From the death of Abel to the present day, the revelation of Christ has come with a bloody price. The admonition of the book of Hebrews could be true for countless generations of God's people. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 36 through 38. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountain places, and in dens and the caves of the earth. All of our forefathers who have gone before us received a good report through faith, but did not receive the fullness of the promise found in Jesus Christ. That promise being the perfection found in Jesus and the eventual resurrection of the faithful. As I have previously stated, when you study the lives of your holy ancestors or sift through the dust and stone to discover the importance of Bible locations, you are touching the real humanity of God's holy word. When you study the people and places of the Bible, you are gazing into the lost reflections of your own humanity. Their failures are your failures, and the keys that released the blessing of God in their lives can also work for you. You may locate copies of the Microsoft Word documents being presented in this episode on this DVD in the folder entitled Video Underscore TS. In order to access these documents, your computer must have a DVD-ROM drive. Should your computer not have a DVD drive, then you may download a self-extracting zip file from my personal website at jmbeatty.com Thank you. I hope you enjoyed these episodes and the principles and methods of Bible research being taught. My prayer is that these techniques will open to you new treasures in God's holy word. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.